Hey guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be starting a taste test vlog. Y'all know I love a good author taste test. I love diving into an author's backlist and really seeing how they progress, how their writing has changed, whether it's fiction, nonfiction. I did a Dolly Alderton taste test last month and that was really cool seeing the difference between her fiction and her nonfiction and I'm doing the same thing in this video with Melissa Broder. So I loved Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. I read it last year. It was one of my top five books that I read last year. I raved about it, loved it so, so, so much. So I am super, super excited to read more of her work. I have two novels here, The Pisces and Death Valley, which I've heard great things about both of these. They both sound really weird, like in-depth just kind of like journeys into the female psyche, mental health, grief, etc. And then I also have her personal essay collection, so more nonfiction, just like musings in essay style. And this is so sad today. I actually already started this one. I am about two thirds ish of the way through So Sad Today. I have mixed thoughts on this. So I guess I'll just get into it. I started this one last night. I just wanted to read a couple of the essays and get the vibe before I went to sleep because I knew I was going to start this vlog today and I really liked it. I would say the first quarter of this book I really really liked. They felt like really intensely personal, really vulnerable, but with this sense of like it's totally fine to be this way like almost like this level of radical acceptance like she would say something totally wild <laughs> and I did resonate with a part of it but not all of it but she just kind of like made it okay to be wherever I was with it whether it was like really sad really scary like whatever and I really liked that but I'm noticing the deeper that we get into the book and I think this kind of like hits its peak around the 50% mark is that each and every essay becomes more personal and less like advice or something that I feel like as the reader I can take from it. And when I critique, you know, nonfiction, especially memoirs or personal essays, I never like to critique their experience. You know, everything that she's saying and hear all of her feelings are totally 100% completely valid, but they just don't resonate deeply with me. Uh, Actually, I think quite a few of our like personal beliefs are very contradicting. There are also a few just writing style things that kind of are cringing me out. I was really expecting to like this, especially after reading the first few essays. So I'm kind of disappointed. This came out in 2016. So that makes a lot of sense. Turns of phrase and just like slang terms in here are giving very, very, very 2016. Uh, a lot of the like social media stuff in here is very 2016. And some of the literary devices as well are very, very 2016. Like the dictionary definition of the word lust as defined by Miriam Webster, like you know what I mean? It's a little bit cringe. It's a little bit dated just because it feels so 2016. Um, but I don't want to critique what she's actually saying in here. I think it's fine. So I'll just kind of like give you a rundown of the essays that I really, really liked. I really liked I Want to Be a Whole Person But Really Thin, Help Me Not Be a Human Being, uh, Honk If There's a Committee in Your Head Trying to Kill You, and I Don't Feel Bad About My Neck. Like all of those, I just feel like captured what it's like to be a youngish woman who is aging but like still very aware of that like sense of adolescence and you're grappling with it. I I loved all of those. The ones that I didn't love are My Vomit Fetish Myself, Hello 911, I Can't Stop Time, Google Hangout With Myself, The Terror In My Heart Says Hi, and Never Getting Over The Fantasy Of You Is Going Okay. Um, I did relate to quite a few things in that latter grouping of essays, but 
quite a few of my just like fundamental personal beliefs were challenged in a way but not even with like evidence like it just seems like her belief systems and the things that she really fixates on in her life are things that don't resonate with me i am very much against psychiatric medications in certain contexts right especially being a mental health professional like i have very strong ideas about this and when i'm reading somebody saying i was on an antidepressant for over a decade and my symptoms are worsening so i just felt like me and my doctor got together and we wanted to up the dosage like to me it's very hard to read that because if i had this person as a client or if this was happening for me internally I would really want to address the underlying symptoms and it just makes me really really sad that that was never even like slightly touched on in that essay of maybe your body's trying to tell you something right maybe these symptoms are indicative of like a piece of trauma that's asking to be held and really sat with and it's not getting that attention uh so for me as a person and as a professional I don't think the answer is just this like american obsession with numbing um but again that's like getting into my own thoughts and feelings and it doesn't invalidate any of her experiences i just think it's kind of hard for me to get into because i have a lot of those kind of like disagreements coming up i also disagree with a little bit about how she talks about gender identity how she talks about porn um just like a few of these conflicts coming up for me personally but i guess it's interesting to see how someone else I guess sees the world a little bit differently also like this openness to psychiatric medications but then Botox is toxic poison like I don't know one can help fight your migraines and also help you look a little bit youthful one is completely changing the makeup of your brain and nervous system but one poison I do you see what I mean how I'm like in conflict with this? So I guess this one is a little bit challenging for me um, Getting some things out of it getting a lot of like inner conflict out of it as well I will probably finish that one up since I only have a few more essays left uh, At least by the end of my work day so I can give you guys an update as to my like full final thoughts about it It's definitely thought-provoking if nothing else um but i will see you later vlog because i've got to get back to work oh actually wait let me let me say one more thing because i just called you vlog um i got a comment which was really odd to me saying that referring to the vlog as vlog is dehumanizing because there are people watching this vlog um i know that okay i'm not deluding myself but for me sitting in this room alone looking at a camera i'm gonna refer to the vlog as a vlog doesn't mean that you're not a person on the other side of this watching like i fully and completely understand that but if i say like hello to all the people while i'm just here looking at this camera in the room by myself it just it's too much for me it gets too like i am a part of the internet like mm, i don't like to be perceived in that way so know that if i'm referring to the vlog as vlog number one it's never that deep it's just me having fun filming a vlog number two you are still valid in your personhood even if i refer to the vlog as vlog and number three maybe it's more about me not wanting to be perceived than you being dehumanized okay so i hope we've cleared that up and uh, um, I'll see you later vlog have a little work break so I finished so sad today and just when I was starting to like really feel things against this book the last two essays really came in and just like 
were amazing <laughs> like it was back to kind of the same feel as the beginning few essays so i ended up really liking them and i was thinking <sighs> gosh now what am I gonna rate this book like I'm honestly still kind of in a tizzy over how I'm gonna read this book the second to last one was around marriage and the idea of becoming a wife and like accepting what that means and grieving like a past version of you it was just cool to like resonate with her on that and then uh the last essay was entitled something like there's sadness under the anxiety but who the hell would go under there or something like that and it talks about the experiences that she's had kind of digging at the depression underneath her anxiety which i hear a lot from clients and i also resonate with like in my own experience it was really a great way to end it kind of like bittersweet still don't love some of the like writing style choices in here this is my struggle i don't want to knock any stars for just like me not resonating with her personal experience because obviously everyone's gonna have different experiences whatever so part of me wants to give it four stars and then just knock it a half star for the like writing style like literary choices that i didn't like and then land on a 3.5 you know what that feels right a three star feels like a little low especially for things that probably were just like my experience so i will go with a 3.5 out of five stars if you want to hear about this very raw vulnerable account of this person's experiences i would say like mid 20s to early 30s female problems read this book you will like it or maybe you won't like all of it because part of it was challenging for me but you will get something out of it which i definitely do think that i did also you probably saw in the b-roll i just wanted to mention really quickly uh novel wicks if you don't know about novel wicks uh they're a brand of bookish related candles and they have their sarah j mass collections out right now and i'm obsessed obviously you saw me in the b-roll burning my valeris one this one is the buzzard one and it smells so wintry what i would literally imagine the sjm world's to smell like so if you like bookish candles especially ones that are wood wicks i love the crackling wood wicks and they have sparkles that melt in as well you can use the code Haley 10 for 10 percent off if you want to make an order i don't get anything from it but i think it's a cool company and i think you should support them if you are a book candle person like me so i have completed my first book for the taste test not going specifically how i thought it was gonna go but we will see as we dive back into melissa broder's fiction i think next i'm gonna start the pisces and this is described as laugh out loud funny provocative and mesmerizing it's about a woman who is post breakup sitting on the beach and she is very attracted to this person who's swimming in the ocean but when she learns the truth about his real identity their relationship and her understanding of what love looks like takes an unexpected turn i'm pretty sure she's about to fall in love with a fish man a merman a fish a fish who can turn into a man i don't know but i'm excited to get into this i think it's gonna be weird and funny kind of like milk fed but also probably have this realness to it so I will be diving into this. I do have to go back to work, so I probably won't get into it until later tonight. But when I have thoughts, I will let you know. Okay, I'm actually so proud of myself. Look at these fucking picture frames I made. I literally made these. These were 99 cent wooden frames that I did this like epoxy like stuff on and pressed all the shells that we found in Florida onto them. So I'm gonna have to go get like pictures of us from the beach printed, but this is my little craft project of the evening. I'm about to heat up some dinner. We have like spinach, spinach, hello? Spinach mac and cheese with chicken that are left over. So I'm gonna eat that for dinner. I just finished up one craft. I'm about to do um, my second craft. So I have these little photo stands literally got this kit at five below and I like put some shells that were left over on these photo stands with the little beachy looking tiles. All I have to do now is like grout them. So like mix up this grout and like finish off, which I don't know how that's gonna go with these shells, but I guess we'll see. Also, 
it just randomly got like so so bright and sunny but i was kind of excited just to like sit down and read my book with my little mac and cheese with the thunderstorm and now it's all bright i'm like are you kidding me i want the thunderstorm rather to read let me read in the thunderstorm so that's what my evening is today being disappointed that it's sunny doing my little crafts and reading my little book morning vlog it is the next day and i am about 50 56 pages into the pisces the storm was absolutely crazy last night it was like perfect reading weather so i was so happy that it came back and i just got to take a nice cozy little bath during the thunderstorm and get into this book although i will say this book is odd okay it's very odd we haven't met the merman in question we're just kind of following around this woman it's plotless extremely character driven which i tend to like but this one isn't pulling me in as much if you're more of a plot driven reader this definitely isn't going to be for you the best way i could describe this honestly interesting musings from an insecure woman like we're really just following following a woman who hasn't done much soul searching about herself. It seems like she gets all of her worth and validation through other people, which like that does hit emotionally at times. And it has this dark humor to it, which is kind of signature to Melissa Broder. And again, sometimes it like really hits and it's really great, but sometimes it's not what I'm looking for. It gives me like, I hate to say it, but like, Amy Schumer vibes like I'm literally just gonna talk about genitalia and like isn't it cool that I'm a, a woman who talks about taking a shit like that kind of stuff that it's like are you just trying to be edgy like I don't know it just feels a little try hard like pick me at some times uh so I don't feel as connected to this character because she has so many defenses up she's not very vulnerable because she doesn't have a sense of self that she's aware of, so it's really hard for the reader to have a sense of her as well. Her voice is also very, very judgy. Like, although she gets her validation from other people, she's also extremely, extremely judgmental of other people, which is a little exhausting to read from. And even if I agree with some of her, like, takes and some of her sentiments, I don't know, I just feel like the judgmental delivery kind of cheapens it. So I don't know, I'm feeling mixed. I'm not feeling into it, but I'm very intrigued and I have a lot of thoughts about it. So I can see this commentary going in a direction that I like, but she's a very unlikable character just to like begin with. I am going to start my day, but I will probably have some time to read on my lunch break. I had a couple cancellations, so it kind of sucks for my business but it's also nice because i have reading time so i will see you then Hello vlog. It is a little bit later. I am, oh gosh, probably like two thirds of the way in. I think I have about like a little over a hundred pages left. This book is so weird. Like it is so weird. Obviously it's weird and darkly humorous because like that is Melissa Broder's brand, but it's weird also in the sense of like, 
I don't know how to feel about it. So the merman-ness was just revealed and it was a really cool scene. Like it was really interesting, funny, but kind of like beautiful. I don't know, it was really, really cool. So I can see now that we're at this point of her finding out and like someone else showing her a level of vulnerability that I can like see her character arc moving in a direction that I like. I don't love that it kind of like took a man to do that, especially because it became increasingly clear up into the 50% mark and beyond that she only sees herself through the eyes of men and validation from men. And while I can definitely empathize with that, like it's literally internalized misogyny, it's not something that I'm really enjoying reading from. I think this could be really validating if you're feeling like stuck in that space and you're dealing with a lot of internalized misogyny to see someone go through this arc. For me, I feel like I've spent so much time stuck there in the past and I've worked through it. It's kind of like that cringing feeling of being there and knowing what it's like and just being like, okay, but I've been through it and I got out. So like, can we please just get out now? Like it's that kind of feeling for me. I just feel like it is not exactly what I'm needing at this time in my life, but maybe if I read this a few years ago, it would have hit a lot differently. I'm excited to see where we go from here though, because now that the merman thing that was teased on the back of the book is actually a part of the plot, two thirds of the way in, we will see. Okay, I'm only like a chapter or two more into the Pisces, but I just have to say, it, is this smut supposed to be like, hot like is this supposed to be attractive or the smut is so weird and uncomfortable it feels more like a study in humanity and anatomy than it does in like sexuality i hope that makes sense but yeah it's weird and it's not really like attractive like when i read milk fed i was like oh there's some weirdness going on here like it's psychological but also like just reading this mutt is pleasing to me. It is nice to read. This is not <laughs> necessarily pleasing to the reader. Um, although it is pleasing to our main character. So I, good for her, I guess, but it's odd. It's very odd. As you can see, it is much later. I finished the Pisces. I have mixed thoughts, like extremely mixed thoughts because that was a great ending. I love the sentiment at the end. Do be aware there is animal abuse and neglect. That could be a big trigger. It was really hard for me to read. So be aware of that. But other than that, the ending was exactly how I would have wanted it to play out. The character development arc was really great. There was like a return to self rather than this harping on internalized misogyny, but that doesn't mean that I enjoyed the whole book. The journey to get there, you know, was a thing as well. So I don't know how I'm gonna rate this. I feel like I'm gonna land on a three star. So far, neither of the books that I've read from Melissa Broder have measured up to Milk Fed. Milk Fed just had like a different energy to me. This is, it just feels like a three star. The last book I'm gonna read for this video is Death Valley. It is another fiction book, another quite short one. I believe it's like 250 pages, yeah. And we are following a woman who is exploring her grief and sense of self through a cactus. She opens the door to a cactus while on a hike goes into the cactus and goes into another world and learns about herself. I think it's gonna be weird and trippy and hopefully I like it better than the last two, which have just kind of been middle of the road for me. I don't know if I'm gonna start this tonight because I'm kind of feeling just like a chill night, maybe watching a movie. Cameron is coaching all night, so I just, 
poured myself a cute little glass of spring rosé and I'm gonna chill. I kind of want to watch Musica, which is the new Cami Mendez rom-com on Amazon Prime. So I might do that. I don't know, but I will let you know when I get into it. Hello vlog. It is the next day after work. I'm literally so fucking tired. Imagine never stopping moving your body and never stopping holding space for other fucking people who I care about, but still it's like hard work from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That was my life just now. So I'm so tired. I haven't started Death Valley, but I kind of want to. I don't know. I don't know. I might start it here in a second. I need to eat food. So I might start while I'm on my little lunch before I film the podcast with Deja tonight. I will let you know when I'm into it. Hello vlog. It's a little bit later. I had a little girly lunch um, of just like random detritus you know a scrounging i love to have a scrounging i know it's like referred to as girl dinner or girl lunch whatever i have always referred to it in my head as scrounging so i scrounged up just like a few bits and bobs and i feel revived a little bit i had my olipop i had my like random handful of shredded cheese you know how it goes um and i feel revived i'm also a quarter of the way through death valley and I am loving this. This feels less like a woman who is pulled by other people's stuff and more like a woman who is grounded in her own reality and being very real about it. Even if it's like she's being real about her delusions and like her irrational thoughts. So basically we are following this woman, her dad, has gone in and out of consciousness. Uh, he's in the ICU and she's dealing with her grief. She is alone in the desert, just kind of exploring and she climbs into this weird cactus on a hike. And she's having this like almost psychedelic experience, but she's sober uh, with her dad as a child. And I think it's really interesting. I really love the themes in here of like attachment relationships and just like seeing how that manifests not only in the relationship with her dad, but also with her husband and also just internally. I think this is really interesting. I like the writing style and just like the voice in here a lot more than how the same writing style was showing up in the Pisces. I feel like the Pisces was a little exhausting to read and this feels more present and reading from someone who is on earth, the Pisces just felt a little disconnected, a little external and this feels like more internal if that makes sense. Uh, but I, I'm liking it at a quarter of the way in. I think I'm gonna pause my reading so I can get some yoga in. I just feel like I need to do some like mindful stretching before we record the pod tonight because I'm going to be sitting filming the pod and then I'm going to be sitting for reading sprints for hours and hours after that tonight. So I need to move just a little bit more um, before I kind of like settle down for the day. So I'm going to do that. I'll definitely be making progress on Death Valley during sprints. So I will let you know how it goes. Hello vlog, it is a little bit later. We're done with the podcast and I am on sprints with my Patreon, just reading away. I'm at the halfway point of Death Valley, loving it. I love the way this character arc is going. We've already gotten to the synopsis that was on the like inside flap very quickly, uh, which I feel like that was a major issue with the Pisces is that didn't really happen until the two thirds mark. Whereas we got to this blur part much much quicker within the first 25 percent now at the 50 percent mark i'm like kind of left in mystery i don't know where it's going but i like where it's headed she's kind of panicking <laughs> within this like desolate desert landscape and it is really thrilling like i feel the panic that this character is feeling and i'm also in it with her like on her internal journey as well i also love the descriptions of the scenery if you're going to a desert location or like the west like la or something like that i think this would be a good read for your trip because it just kind of captures that scenery really beautifully while talking about like 
really intense emotional experiences as well. It just kind of like balances itself out. Loving it so much. I'm on sprint, so I'm gonna have a lot of time to read tonight and I I think I'm gonna finish this up. Hello vlog, I'm still sprinting away and I am now 75%, actually probably a little over 75% of the way through Death Valley. We've taken a turn in a good way. Like I loved the literary vibe of the first half, but now this back half is almost like survival horror. Like our main character is just having to survive in this desolate landscape and we get like the nitty gritty of her fears, both like of the physical situation and like the existential fears. It's so good. The way that the desert environment reflects the internal is just masterfully done. I feel like this is the book that I've been waiting for all of this vlog. I'm about to binge the rest of it. I'm so in love with it. Let me get it together. Let me get it together. This ending just made me cry. <laughs> it was so good. The plight of the eldest daughter just gets me. Just gets me. Any eldest daughter representation, <sighs> especially with like the painful musings about it all, about survival. Beautiful metaphors, beautiful writing, beautiful gowns you might say, and not in a shady way. Like, genuinely, I loved everything about this book. The same feeling that I had when I read Milk Fed last year is how I felt reading Death Valley. I immediately want to reread it. So good. I feel like I will keep discovering more each time I read it. It's so rich. It doesn't feel as self-involved as the Pisces and So Sad today. It feels like open and all-encompassing. That is the best way that I can describe it. Needless to say, five stars. This was phenomenal. The best book of the vlog. And I'm so happy that I was able to do this Melissa Broder taste test for you. If your taste aligns with mine, I would say Milk Fed and Death Valley give them a go. If the pie season so sad today appeal to you, maybe you'll like those too. Something about it, the self-involvement, the judginess, just like didn't sit super great with me. But overall, I really like Melissa Broder's writing style and I love doing this taste test. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you are not already. Don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.